When it comes to this whole P. Diddy fiasco, there is one question that still lingers in my mind, and it's that, why hasn't P. Diddy been arrested yet? When Diddy's homes were raided in March, his homes in Los Angeles and Miami, prosecutors were pretty confident that they had built a case against Diddy. Did he do it? Did he not do it? Prosecutors believe Diddy did it. Usually comes a raid, comes arrest, because once again, you need to have a very strong case to raid a home. We know both of Diddy's sons were in handcuffs, and I do believe both, if not one, I believe it's Justin, who was named in Little Rod's case. Miami-Dade officers even arrested one of Diddy's mules, who was Brendan Paul. He was preparing to board one of Diddy's private jets when he was met by several Miami-Dade officers at the Miami Opelika Executive Airport. Yes, Brendan was arrested due to having possession of narcotics, but given the fact that these feds raided Diddy's homes, both of his homes, are you going to tell me they found absolutely nothing incriminating against Diddy? Now, here's what's even more bizarre. This is Diddy's associate or known associate, his mule. And Diddy, around the same time, was seen talking to federal agents at the same airport. Diddy was actually there while this arrest was happening. Sean Diddy Combs was seen speaking to federal agents at an airport Monday after they intercepted his plane following a raid at his Los Angeles and Miami home. This is around the same exact time that they were telling us that they could not find Diddy that Diddy fled after he was given a heads up that the feds were raiding his home, and yet, that exact same time, feds actually intercepted his plane, and they arrested his associate. But Diddy was never seen in handcuffs. Isn't that very bizarre? In footage obtained by TMZ, the rapper 54 is standing with his entourage as they are surrounded by a team of law enforcement officials at Miami Opelika Executive Airport. It's believed that the exchange took place moments before his pal, 25-year-old Brendan Paul, was arrested and booked on narcotics charges following a search the outlet reported. Earlier that same exact day, both Los Angeles and Miami law enforcement officers moved in to seize Combs' phones and computers as part of a federal trafficking investigation. That very next day, on Tuesday, the rapper had seemingly disappeared along with his private jet. Now, from what I understand, search warrants when it comes to a person's residence is a little tricky. That person that they have a search warrant against when it comes to their property, that person is not required to be at that property. That person is not restricted from traveling. But that begs the question, why did officials intercept Diddy's plane in the first place? Were they really there to arrest his mule and search for drugs? Or were they there to relay a message to Diddy? That's why Diddy could not be found the very next day. At the end of the day, Diddy is still innocent until proven guilty. He does have many allegations against him, but these allegations have to be proven true. But the feds were taking very aggressive steps, raiding both of his homes, seizing computers, videotapes, and other items. They were there by land, sea, and air. Two months later, we hardly have gotten any information. And this man is basically hip-hop's Jeffrey. We're talking about involvement with minors, ending people's lives. A lot of this information, there's photographic evidence. Yet after all of the raids, after all of the seizing, after all of the victims have came forward, the only update we got to P. Diddy's case, Diddy's case, or P. Diddy himself, is that he slept with Carl Winslow's. Carl Winslow's from Family Matters. He was putting in that work on Reginald Vell Johnson. Like I see, like, when Diddy, Carl Winslow, we was at the party. Uh-huh. And, you know, we just chilling like that. And me. He messed up my childhood every, when he told me every, that. Everybody know me, right? Right. I'm a, I'm a goofy. Oh, I'm funny and stuff like yeah. that. So I hear just wearing out shit. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, hearing that, I'm like, on six oh, who's wearing out right kicking the door poof kicking the door i seen i looked i seen carl winslow put his yeah, that's head the father up. ain't that the father from, oh, like, from family matters <laughs> yeah oh, no way winslow. Carl winslow. Oh, the oh, the oh the dad the dad oh the dad the dad, the dad. Yeah. i swear to god dead homies neighborhood crib so when i see <laughs> wow. I, seen, I seen that Man. and then so who who's piping carl uh, diddy yeah yes. diddy was so when, when when i see 
when I seen that cuz right, Diddy came back and he he was telling me he was like, it's nothing more enjoyable than having a man do something for some money. I'm Reginald Vell Johnson once again is the father from Family Matters. It's alleged he slept with Carl Winslow, but you have to remember it was also alleged he slept with Meek Mill as well. Now, it's not illegal to give it to Carl Winslow's, and the only reason why I'm mentioning it is because that this is, again, the only update that has come out in the span of two months since feds raided his homes. Many people thought this was it. After years of allegations, Diddy was finally going to go down. I didn't see it that way. I saw it as this is just more smoke and mirrors. This is just another Jeffrey case. If Diddy is indeed arrested, he will just be shipped off to an island somewhere where he'll go into retirement. At the end of the day, those federal agents that went to Diddy's homes and raided his homes were not there to gather evidence to build a case against Diddy. Oh no, they were there to clean up any evidence just like they did with Jeffrey on Jeffrey's Island. NYPD went to Jeffrey's home and what did they do? They destroyed any and all evidence. This is why nobody in connection with Jeffrey was arrested. The only person arrested was Jeffrey's female counterpart, his female associate, who's probably on the same island with him today. That is the only person in the entire case that was arrested alongside with Jeffrey. Well, who also raided Diddy's homes? Well, it was none other than New York again. Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation. The same NYPD that went to Jeffrey's also went to Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes. They were just there, like I said, to clean up the evidence. Same exact thing they did with Jeffrey. This all makes a lot more sense when you understand that the same major players that were involved with Jeffrey's case are involved with Diddy's case as well, because there are multiple claims, not only from Sean Diddy Combs' former bodyguard, but also Little Rod Jones as well, that Fed sees the music mogul's freak off tapes which involve politicians and celebrities alike. As Sean Diddy Combs grapples with legal battles on multiple fronts, including a federal investigation into alleged trafficking, concerns are mounting among his inner circle. Gene Deal, a former bodyguard who worked closely with Combs during his time at Bad Boy Records, believes that Combs' celebrity associates should also be apprehensive. Gene was quoted as saying, I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there, he claimed. And it sounds like to me that Diddy admitted that the princes were at his party, at least Prince Harry. Diddy made an appearance on the BBC chat show, The Graham Norton Show, which aired in January 2011, and discussed the number of parties Combs has been known to throw, as well as the celebrities who are often in attendance. However, when Diddy was asked by host Norton, I read you want to get Prince William and Prince Harry to a Diddy party, the rapper said, I don't think, not anymore, I mean before you know, trust me, they are off the list. But before they were young bucks growing up, they were getting themselves in a lot of trouble. I was like, hey, why don't you come and hang with me? Now, again, it's not 100% concrete, whether they went to the parties or not, Harry and Combs have been publicly photographed together only once in 2007 when the rapper was invited to play at a special concert in London that was organized to mark the 10th anniversary of Princess Diana's death. Now, this concert did have a lot of performers, and after the show, both princes, William and Harry, were photographed meeting groups of the performers, the images showing them posing with Combs and Kanye West. This photo was also shown in the Graham Norton Show episode. While the princes are not accused of any wrongdoings, we don't know who's on the tapes or photographs that were seized from both of Diddy's homes. And again, it's not just the bodyguard Gene Deal who has made these allegations of these tapes and these photos, but also the man who has a case against Diddy, United States rapper Rodney Little Rod Jones, also has claimed earlier that Diddy has made tapes of various celebrities and politicians using hidden cameras in his home during his freak-off parties. Gene Deal states that Diddy had every room bugged, so no matter what room you were in, you were seen on camera or on a photograph. Gene Deal was also asked a very good question in his interview. Diddy has all these big-time friends, from politicians to celebrities to even preachers. 
He's friends and associated with T.D. Jakes. And yet, ever since these allegations came out, ever since his homes were raided and this case was built against him, nobody has came out to defend Diddy. Nobody spoke of Diddy's character. And that could be due to a couple of reasons. Either one, it'll ruin their brand, or two, they were involved with it as well and they don't want to be dragged into the mud. They just want to hide. Ashton Kutcher is a longtime friend of Diddy. They became friends when Ashton Kutcher was working at MTV in 2003. So did he ever once come out and defend his character? No. His wife, Mila Kunis, urged that Ashton Kutcher to keep his distance from his good friend, Sean Diddy Combs. Ashton Kutcher has not said a word about Diddy's character, and he was actually expecting a subpoena from Sean Diddy Combs amid his investigation. What has resurfaced and caused scrutiny for Ashton Kutcher was a 2019 interview when he was asked to share details about Diddy's parties. And Ashton Kutcher stated, there's a lot he can't tell. And then he goes on to state that I can't tell that one either. Usher gave a little bit more detail into these parties by stating that Diddy introduced him to a totally different set of stuff, which included making love. Making love is so hot in the industry. He continued by stating, alleging that there was always girls around. You'd open a door and seeing somebody doing it or several people in a room having an orgy. You never knew what was going to happen. This is also reminiscent of where that man stated in the interview that he kicked down one of the doors at Diddy's party and he saw Diddy making love to Carl Winslow. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some Camp? Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it and it was, and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jody C, Mary okay? J. Blosh. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. Yeah. I actually stayed up longer than them. And, I, and, what and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but again, it's just weird how Diddy has all these high profile friends and nobody's coming to his defense. These tapes definitely are Diddy's life insurance. And I am sure he has copies among copies. And he states that if anything happens to me, if I'm arrested or if I'm bumped off, these tapes will indeed be released. If you check Diddy's social media now, he's living his best life in Miami. He knows he's untouchable. Nothing will happen to him. And if he is arrested in some kind of mock trial, they'll just state that he took his own life. But ultimately, they'll just ship him off somewhere. Some say Diddy is the fall guy, and perhaps he is. But he has a lot of physical information, a lot of physical proof that goes all the way up the ladder. And at the end of the day, we are just looking at another Jeffrey. But in any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like. As any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.